Let's see. Uh, remind, remind me, what type of functional group is this? And now the hide. Uh, and what type of functional group is this? That's an alcohol. We haven't talked about alcohols today, but you've seen them in class. Um, alcohols are one of the major functional groups on the next exam, so you should be uh, definitely make the flashcards so you can quickly identify an alcohol. Uh, an alcohol is a carbon with a hydroxy on it, so this is an alcohol group. So what have we just learned? We've just learned that a Grignard plus a aldehyde makes an alcohol. A Grignard plus an aldehyde makes an alcohol. That's good to know. Uh, however, it shouldn't be that crucial to memorize that, because if you ever forgot it, you should be able to figure it out just by making some pictures like this. Even if you, did, even if you had never heard the name Grignard, aldehyde, and alcohol, you should still be able to work all this out based on the charges. We're just putting negatives at tails and partial positives at heads. Uh, but it's still good to know the names uh, as well. Uh, let me just do a quick aside. Uh, remember what type of functional group is this? Yeah, carboxylic acid. I just wanted to warn you, this is not an alcohol, even though it has an OH group. Um, this is not considered an alcohol. This is not considered an alcohol OH. So you should not call this an alcohol. This is a carboxylic acid, just as a, as a quick aside. An alcohol should not. So an alcohol is not when you have a hydroxy on a carbonyl carbon. Uh, so a carbonyl carbon attached to a hydroxy is called a carboxylic acid. A uh, regular carbon attached to a hydroxy is an alcohol. Yeah, so there's still some important points to keep going on with Grignard's here? Okay. Now, why was it important that we added the hydronium as a second step? Because remember, if the hydronium had been added at the same time as the aldehyde, the Grignard would, attack, would react with the hydronium instead of reacting with the aldehyde. So if you want to attack a carbonyl, you have to add the protonation in the second step. What would the product have been if we didn't do the second step? What would the product be if we never added the hydronium? If we had never added the hydronium, we would just stop right here, right? Now, usually you don't do that. Usually you don't stop here because you usually want an alcohol. But this would be a good test question. They could ask you what happens if you don't add that second step. Well, then the oxygen just doesn't get protonated. If you don't do that step, the oxygen just doesn't get protonated, and you would end with this. But usually you want the alcohol, so you would add the hydronium there. What if you, could you add a green yard and an aproduct solvent at the same time? Yes. In fact, um, you always have to have a solvent. Right? So maybe I should have mentioned that before. I said before you should not use a protic solvent. Well, that means you have to use an aprotic solvent. And actually, I think your instructor is actually pretty picky that you, that you should show the solvents. Yeah. Um, so um, I should have been saying that maybe here I should have said specifically that here we're adding an aldehyde in um, uh, ethers are good aprotic solvents to use uh, with Grignards. A lot of the time uh, we use uh, ethers here. Um, remember that an ether Looks like this. And is that second step also considered an aqueous workup? Yeah, this is also called aqueous workup. That's a good point too. So this is uh, adding this hydronium is called aqueous workup. There's a couple different ways to write this. So you could just call this aqueous workup, or you could call it hydronium, or you could call it water plus acid. This is really just shorthand for water plus acid. <clears throat> this is just shorthand for water plus acid. So H3O plus is the same thing as hydronium. That's the same thing as aqueous workup. And that's the same thing as, I forget what the other thing was, but they're all the same. Okay. Um, by the way, technically, we shouldn't even have to add acid. We should just be able to add water, right? Because we know that um, this, is a, this is a pretty strong base. It should want to deprotonate even just water um, over here. Oh, well, maybe not, actually. Uh, maybe, that, uh, maybe, maybe it is safer to add the hydronium here. Let's stick with the hydronium. Okay, so you should definitely stick with the hydronium in this case. All right, so let's keep proceeding with this very important reaction. Reagent. Okay, 
So let's go through the mechanism and show the product here. So this is another predict the products problem. So far, you seem to be doing okay. Okay, yeah, let's stop and talk about this. <clears throat> Alright, by the way, one thing to notice is this is the same reaction we did before, right? Um, why are we doing the same reaction as before? Because you can see it takes a lot of practice to really get comfortable with this. Uh, you really have to see reactions multiple times in order to see uh, how to get it right. Uh, of course, we're not going to be able to practice it that many times in the session, but it's very important that after the session, you try to find lots of grid yard problems to practice. All right, the first thing you guys did was you erased the covalent bond, and you replaced it with charges. So that went great. And both of you avoided the mistake. You both avoided the mistake of putting the negative charge here. So that was good. You avoided this common mistake of putting the negative charge here. And then we should immediately say, who's the, uh, the active atom? The carbonyl carbon. And that should be at the tail. So who is it reasonable to put at the head? The carbonyl carbon. Why? Because it has a delta positive. That kicks this off. And then I was very pleased to see that both of you guys used numbers. So that's good. Numbering should be our default. One, two, three. Um, I, I should use the same numbers that you guys did. I like that stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, if you didn't use these numbers, maybe you should switch to using my numbers so that you can be on the same page. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, very good. <clears throat> All right, and now remember, the wrong thing is the one fell swoop technique. So let's go through the step-by-step -step technique. Uh, maybe it, help, it, it may, might be clearest to start at the tail. So I'm going to start here at the tail. Actually, I guess I'm going to start here with this number one. Who's the number one attached to? Who's the two attached to? It's good that you said and. It's attached to more than one thing. Uh, looks like I have to leave myself some room, huh? So. Who is it attached to besides the three? I the five. Sorry, There we go. So that should be attached to the five. All right, and who's the five attached to? The four, and the six, and the um, and With a single bond. All right, so it looked like both of you made a mistake somewhere along the way in getting this. Can you both see where you kind of went wrong? I, I so, did you fix yours? Uh, one, two. So, who should the number two attack? Five. And here it's attached. It's not attached to the five, is it? Oh. Okay. You can see. All right. Now, the most important thing is to think back about that series of questions I asked you. You'll be able to get these right when you can ask yourself those same questions. So, again, one thing that helps is maybe starting at the tail end. I started at the tail end. I started at the far end of the molecule and left myself plenty of space. I went along one atom at a time, taking my time. We can't rush this. Who is this attached to? Who is this attached to? Who is this attached to? This is the only way to get the right product. There is no fast way, except once you've done 100 of these, you'll be fast. But at first, the way to learn it is to go very slowly. Um, and you can see the numbering is crucial here. So um, like I said, I was pleased to, see, pleased to see that both of you guys numbered. However, maybe you didn't use the numbers enough when you were actually making the, the product here. You can see what's the point of putting in the numbers, so you can specifically say who is attached to whom. You want to specifically say in your mind who is attached to whom. The point of using the numbers is you don't want to just say, oh, this carbon is attached to a carbon, because then you don't know which carbon it is. We have to give all the carbons special names. If we wanted to, we would, put, we would call them Alice, Bob, Carol, Doug, Ed, and Fred, 
and we could have said that Bob is going to end up attached to whoever's name this one was uh, over here. But rather than giving them names, we give them uh, boring numbers. But the point there is just to num is just to name them so that we can tell um, who's attaching to whom. Okay. So you actually want to use the numbers in your mind when you're drawing the product. Now let's do the charges. The number two is at the initial tail. It's losing its charge, um, so it ends up neutral. Um, and the oxygen is at the final head. So it, it started neutral and it's gaining electrons, so it ends up negative. Uh, this ionic bond is breaking. We will get this here. Now, of course, there's many different shapes you could draw this in. So your picture might not look identical to this. So how can you tell if it's right? By numbering and making sure that everybody who's connected in my picture is also connected in your picture. So really take your time.